Hello and welcome. Welcome to my kitchen in Cork. My name is Paul O'Mani. Enlighten Up has joined us and thank you very much. Binge, Crystal, hello. How do you do? Very good, very well. Nice to see you. Uh, Bajari, Spilone from Milan. Oh, thank you very much for coming. It's, it must be lunchtime in, uh, in Milan. Night Hiker, did I see you there? Did I see you there? I'm still in Cork. I am. Or, or do you mean you're still in Cork? Crystal, thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't often scope at this time of the day. So I am thrilled to have you here. Oh, it's a nice time in New York, isn't it? It's a very nice time. Five hours earlier than here in Ireland. Excuse me now while I just drink a cup of tea while we're talking. I'm um, getting ready to read you some poetry by, oh my goodness, 4.30 a.m. Well, enlighten Yes, morning time in Virginia. Right. Storm Dancer, hello. How do you do? Uh, Tommy living healthy. Well, living, anyone who's living healthy is doing well, I think. I'm about to read you some poetry by Walt Whitman. Now, not all of you will know Walt Whitman. In fact, I don't know. This is what he looks like. This is Walt Whitman, and he's dead. Right? He died in 1892, and I bet you the Eagles are celebrating. It's rainy in Milan. It's dry, a fine blue sky, sunshine, it's a little bit here. So yeah, I have, um, I'm going to read um, a badge of honor being blocked by a bully. Well, good stuff. Uh, Paul Austin. Um, hello, Paul Austin. To the leavened soil they trod, which is the last poem by Walt Whitman in the collection Drum Taps. Drum Taps uh, uh, is a collection of poems that Walt Whitman published in the 1865, the year that the American Civil War ended, the year that Walt Whitman was, uh, not Walt Whitman, the year that Abraham Lincoln was murdered. Um, Drum Taps is part of Leaves of Grass because what Walt Whitman did is he put all of his poetry into one place called Leaves of Grass, 1865, yeah. Um, it must have been written in the first part of 1865. There's a slight chance that he wrote it later, but the collection Drum Taps was published before Walt Whitman died. And, sorry, before Abraham Lincoln died. Now, guys, I'm not an academic. I'm not here to give lectures about Walt Whitman. I'm actually here also to finish my lunch. So, I hope you'll be tolerant, and in return for being tolerant of me eating a bit of toast and a boiled egg, I'm going to uh, I'm going to read this poem by Walt Whitman, and I'm going to read the poem not just once. Uh, what do I do? I guessing. Do you see where I tagged you in another? Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did, and I'll be uh, I'll be looking at that. Um, the um, the link you tagged um, when I get time, but I'm definitely very grateful for it. You're having coffee. Uh, I think the person who asked me, what do I do, meant how do I earn my living? I do marketing for my living. Mm. I earn money helping people with their business. She loves me too. Oh my goodness. It's a woman, right. Okay. I am about to um, read to you the poetry of Walt Whitman. Now, in my opinion, Walt Whitman is the greatest poet who's ever lived. He would be my favorite poet of all 
poets that I've ever read in my life. He was born in 1819, lived to 1892. And here is an example of a piece of poetry by him. It's about 20, um, it's, it's about 20 lines long. So that'll give you an idea. To the, to the leavened soil they trod is the name of it. To the leavened soil they trod, calling I sing for the last Forth from my tent emerging for good, loosing, untying the tent ropes. In the freshness of the forenoon air, in the far-stretching circuits and vistas, again to peace restored. To the fiery fields, emanative, and the endless vistas beyond, to the south, and the north, to the leavened soil of the general western world, to attest my songs, to the Allegheim hills and the tireless Mississippi, to the rocks I calling sing, and all the trees in the woods, to the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairies spreading wide, to the far off sea and the unseen winds and the sane impalpable air. And responding, they answer all, but not in words. The average earth, the witness of war and peace, acknowledges mutely. The prairie draws me close as the father to bosom broad the sun. The northern ice and rain that began me, nourish me to the end. And the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. And the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. To the leaven soil they trod. I, I stumbled over the reading of a couple of words there because, frankly, I can't pronounce them properly. I'm not. I have read them before, but I've forgotten the correct pronunciation. So somebody must tell me because I'm sure they did that. Aleg, Aleghanian, Aleghanian, Aleghanian. I think they might be hills. In somewhere like Kentucky, but I could be well wrong. Alleghanian Hills. Allegheny. 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 Well, there's no Y in the uh, in the version I'm reading from. So. So that was one. And emanative. Yes, that's that's uh, Alleg. Henian. Well, it's a, a, a E instead of the A. A double L E G H A N I A N. They're mountains in Virginia. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. Right. Unfortunately, I can't hear the correct way to pronounce them. You're dyslexic. I'll read it all wrong out loud. Ah, it's a damn difficult word as far as I'm concerned. Aleghanian, Hanian, yeah, Aleghanian. That's absolutely right, Crystal, yeah. Let me read it again. Let me read the poem again to you. I probably won't pronounce it any better this time, but um, at least we know that I might fall over it. To the leavened soil they trod, calling I sing for the last, forth from my tent emerging for good, loosing on. Tying in, uh, untying the tent ropes in the freshness of the forenoon air, in the far stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored, to the fiery fields, emanative and the endless vistas beyond, to the south and the north, to the leavened soil of the great, the general western world to attest my songs, 
to let the Alleghanian hills and the tireless Mississippi, to the rocks I calling sing, and all the trees in the woods, to the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairie spreading wide, to the far-off sea and the unseen winds and the sane impalpable air, and responding they answer all, but not in words, the average earth. The witness of war and peace acknowledges mutely. The prairie draws me close as the father to bosom broad the son. The northern ice and rain that began me nourish me to the end. But the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. Quite, uh, hello, hello, not knock, hello. It's great to have you here. It's really chuffed to have you here. Now the, well, I'll tell you one impression I have from the poem. I mean, imagine a guy who was an enthusiastic supporter of the North during the Civil War. Um, I'm having, I'm having a boiled egg, eating a. In fact, it's much too hard boiled. But imagine a guy who was very ardent supporter of the cause of the North, and when the Civil War ends, and it was a vicious, bloody civil war. More people were killed in the American Civil War than had been killed in any previous war in human history. Yes, this uh, one, this one here is finished. And he ends with the last line, but the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. So the generosity of spirit of Whitman almost knows no bound. I mean, he certainly had no impulse to rub it in. We won, we won, we won. And that, the Civil War was brutal. Oh, is that where Bite the Bullet came from? I mean, I find that quite... I mean, Whitman is singing far every single person who has died in the civil war every person peace is coming peace he says he says in the far stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored but you know whatever the, the poem to me is about generosity of spirit it's about the the awfulness of war and how great it is to have peace. Yes, absolutely, Jack. He was trying to heal the country. He certainly was doing his bit for healing the country. And, I mean, more healing needed to be done in the United States after the Civil War than needs to be done today. Claim independence, then they fight each other. From anarchy comes chaos and control. Well, general political principles are one thing, or but the the reality of the American Civil War was awful. And in this, I mean, what I take from it is that at the end of every war, there will be a peace. And the peace will have to be built. And going into war without any sense of without any sense of the peace that will have to be built is is to be short sighted. Cracks me up that you eat while broadcasting. Barbara K B, my good friend, hello. Oh you know why do I eat while I'm broadcasting? I eat because this is how I live. And you know, I don't put on a special broadcasting hat when I'm doing scopes. And some, only some of the people who are here know me as a 
egg cup user. And I have a collection of egg cups. Many people eat and scope. Right. Slavery left over from the colonial rule had to be stopped by war or otherwise. Did I used to be a sniper? <laughs> That's a good point. I look very well. I, I do, yeah. This, um... Do you know, Tommy, I, I'm very fond of this mug. You know, it was a good choice. However, I... You see this colour inside? Slavery wasn't the only reason for this. Oh, we could have a huge debate, I bet you. This colour inside the cup doesn't... No, I don't. I'm not a, I'm not a potter. No. I prefer a white inside on a cup to any dark colour because I like to see as, as strongly as possible the colour of the liquid inside, especially with coffee. Well, it looks cobalt blue, doesn't it? I think that's... Uh, yeah, it does look cobalt blue. But I drink my coffee black. So, uh, you want to see if it's clean? Ah, I'm not the world's greatest uh, person for cleanliness. I, I've had a philosophy all my life that says, you know, you, you develop immunity to... Uh, does milk still look white? Yes, yes, if you mean, does milk, I'll show you, I'll show you, just one second. <clears throat> this is the milk that I, uh, that I put in my, uh, in my tea. You want to know if it's white. So yeah, it's white. Is it white in the cobalt cup? Ah, now look, I, uh, if only you'd said that first, I could have found another cup. The question is, are we at a time of peace or war now, right now? Well, chicken, that is a... Uh, oh, you did see the famous iron board. Oh, dear. <laughs> Barbara's referring to the fact that I once, uh, or maybe twice, uh, revealed that I I iron my shirts. Aha, there you are. Nothing tastes better than the milk from an Irish cow. And <laughs> I don't really I don't really enjoy eating in public like this. But I have to admit that I was so hungry that I said to myself, look, am I going to do the scope or am I going to eat? And then I thought, look, I'll do the two of them. What's it? Devil take the hindmost. Well, I will read Walt Whitman for the third time. Oh, enlighten up. Nelly, that's ever so kind of you. Mason Miller, welcome to Periscope. So for the third time, here is the poem by Walt Whitman, To the Leavened Soil They Trod. To the leavened soil they trod, calling, I sing for the last. Forth from my tent emerging for good, loosing, untying the tent ropes. In the freshness, the forenoon air, in the far stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored. To the fiery fields, emanative and the endless vistas beyond, to the south and the north. To the leavened soil of the great western world, 
to attest my songs to the Alleghenian hills and the tireless Mississippi, to the rocks I calling sing and all the trees in the woods, to the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairies spreading wild, to the far off sea and the unseen winds and the sane palpable air, and responding, they answer all but not in words. The average earth, the witness of war and peace, acknowledges mutely. The prairie draws me close as the father to bosom broad the sun. The northern ice and rain that began me nourish me to the end, but the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. I just love that last line. But the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. I mean, I, I feel the heat of Texas and, well, New Mexico. The American-Mexican War was over by this stage, wasn't it? The American-Mexican War occurred in the 18... 50s, I think the beginning of the 1850s. Yes, such a picture, Barbara. Yes, such a picture. Whitman is is a painter, really, uh, in that he well, he creates an opportunity for the listeners or the readers to conjure up their sense of place, their sense of space. I love him for that. I love him for so many different things. I am not, I am biased, I have to admit. So look guys, I wanted to come here and I wanted to uh, press on with reading this book. You see, the, and it's fairly thick. You see, I, I began on Periscope a, lo a good long time ago about a year and a half. In fact, I've lost track of how long. Um, Nelly might remember. In fact, I think it was about August. The August after Periscope was founded. Ah, the soldiers died upon the earth. Nature was with them as war and peace passed. Grace visual. Yes. Two and a half years. Right. Two and a half years. Two and a half years ago, I vowed that I would read all of this on Periscope. It was a kind of crazy commitment, but I haven't given up on it. We've now finished the reading of Drum Tops, and the next, uh, next month Periscope will turn three, and I started reading Leaves of Grass in about August. I'd begun doing some scopes before that. You're making hot tea without milk. Right. Ordinary black tea? Ordinary black tea? Is it black tea? But the next poem in the uh, the short answer is I don't feel about Conor McGregor. I don't I don't feel Conor at all. I have to admit. Um, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed. I, I'm in them um, and that's the next poem. I recently read it all and uh, recorded it. And I, I get torn between the desire to read it all in one go and thereby give people a sense of the whole poem and the desire to read it slowly, piece by piece thereby giving an opportunity for the, um, for the poem to sink in. I love that you have real opinions. I, I'm pausing. I'm pausing, Nelly, because I think, well, a part of me said to myself, well, doesn't everybody have real opinions? Not everybody expresses their opinions. I mean, we all know there are people, oh, many people are sheep. Might as well be as much hung for a sheep as a lamb, eh? 
not sure. I think I'm getting lost. I understand what you mean, though. I do. I, I get it, I think. Um, the advantage I have in relation to poetry is that I don't, uh, I've never been to a poetry class in my life. Well, I, uh, no, sorry, I never, I never, I went to one lecture about poetry. I have been in, uh, I have been in uh, writing uh, groups and workshops. Okay, well, look, I want to thank you all for having been here. It's been wonderful. You're great, great company. And to those of you who will, I hope, watch this on playback. I, uh, and, and many of the people who watch it on playback will be people that I know already be, uh, here, and some of you will know them. But it doesn't matter who you are. It's, uh, it's a, been a pleasure to uh, have your company. And thank you very much. And I hope it won't be very long before I continue reading Walt Whitman. And uh, thank you, California, Virginia. Where else was mentioned as places here? I have to say thank you, Cincinnati. Um, Milan, thank you very much. And thank you, Chicago, of course. Of course, Chicago. Oh, city of my dreams. Hog butcher for the world, Chicago. All the best, guys. Cheerio. Until next time. Bye.